how's it going, AS Math? It's Mr. Knight. We're going to be looking at velocity time graphs today. Uh, we already looked at displacement time graphs, so today we're going to see how they relate. We're also just going to see, honestly, how the last velocity time graph is going to look like, because um, we haven't seen one yet. So, could I find the displacement using a velocity time graph? Is that possible? Well, there's only one way to find out. And I took uh, fellow classmate Blake's time data from our Wednesday lab. So using Blake's data, he did a 100 meter dash in 13.23 seconds. So to get his velocity, remember that's a slope of our displacement time graph. So that's just our y, the change in our y over the change in our x. So we get 7.56 meters per second. Well, it's a constant speed. Well, we can assume it's constant because he's not really changing his speed. Um, so our velocity time graph, if I look at this guy, again, we got velocity versus time. Really, this guy is just going to look like a straight line going across. Okay, Not all of our velocity time graphs are going to look like that, but for this case, it does. Now, if you look at that, we got a pretty looking rectangle right there. Um, we have a length of 13.23 seconds, kind of weird. We got a width of 7.56 meters per second. So why am I talking about length and width? Well, if we took the area of this guy and I actually multiplied those values, I ended up getting 100.02, which is approximately, approximately 100 meters, which is his displacement, right? His total displacement. That's kind of weird. And that's actually a feature of these velocity time graphs. If you take the area from this line to the bottom of the x-axis, just this little part, then you are going to end up getting your displacement back. And that's a property of these things. So if we uh, look at the area under the line of velocity time graph, we will get the displacement. And also... Since we're talking about uh, velocity being the slope of a displacement time graph, I could also say the slope of a velocity time graph is going to be my acceleration. That's how my velocity, the rate of change of my velocity is going. So um, yeah, the slope is acceleration. The area under the line is velocity time. So if we look at a velocity time graph, we need to keep in mind too and you don't have to draw this, but just to kind of get a visual. We need to keep in mind velocity time, that velocity is a vector. So we can get negative velocity if it's going in the opposite direction, right? Um, and if we wanted to take the area under the curve of these things, um, we got to kind of break it up into parts. We couldn't just take the area of just some random shape. I mean, we could try, but it would be a little hard. So you got to break it up like this into sections. Um, so if you wanted the total displacement from here to here for this velocity, um, then we're going to have to add up those times. Another thing I wanted to mention and look at, again, the slope is our acceleration. So right here we have a constant acceleration that's happening. Uh, for M2, it's a negative acceleration. It's going down. And if it's horizontal... There is no acceleration. It's not changing at all, just like with Blake's graph a little bit earlier. Okay, And you should expect, if we're having a negative velocity, this thing's dipping down. So to get the area of that guy, it's really going to be the area from here, down here, to the top. So it's really in reference to the x-axis, or in this case, the t-axis. And so you're going to end up getting a negative area, which is totally appropriate because displacement can be negative. So let's look at some examples. All right. Again, don't write all this down. Just look at this worked example right here, page 2324. Arthur travels at a constant speed of 5 meters per second for 10 seconds and then decelerates at a constant rate of 0.5 meters per second squared until coming to rest. Sketch the VT graph. Part B is asking Brendan, or it says, Brendan travels at constant 4 meters per second starting from the same time and place. Show that Arthur and Brendan are traveling at the same speed after 12 seconds and hence, oh my god, find the furthest Arthur gets ahead of Brendan. All right. So part A, let's actually just sketch our graph and see what this looks like. Well, for this first part, we know he's going to travel at a constant speed of 5 meters per second. 
And again, if we're treating this as velocity versus time, that means it's 5, the constant, it's just going to go straight across right there. We also know that this could be broken into two stages. So our first stage is what we have right here. Our second stage, we know he starts to decelerate at a constant rate until v equals 0. So we get back to 0 for v. Um, and we also know that the initial velocity of this guy is going to be our 5 meters per second. So uh, if it's going down at a constant rate like that, then we also know we also know that uh, if he's going at 5 meters per second at a C celery, it's going to take 10 seconds, an additional 10 seconds for him to get back to zero. Just by looking at this, you can tell. Because um, it's negative 0 0.5 after a second, after another second. So he's going to end up with an additional 10 seconds going at a slope of negative 0 0.5. So that's basically what our graph is going to end up looking like. And you could see that for uh, the work that you can do with uh, v equals u plus at. Um, so you can actually use the Subot equation to help you out. And so for the second stage, you could plug in 0 for your v, 5 for the initial, negative 0 0.5 for the a, and then it's going to end up getting t equals 10. 10 additional seconds, which is what we did up here. So your graph will end up looking something like this guy. And we could break it into parts, just like we did. First stage, second stage. So now for part B, what we want to do is we actually want to show that Arthur and Brendan are traveling at the same speed after 12 seconds. And then we just really want to find out um, how much further does Brendan get ahead, um, or how much further Arthur, rather, gets ahead of Brendan. So this first stage, he's just going at a constant meters per second so he's starting right about here okay so if he starts about there um, so it says show same speed as Arthur after 12 seconds um, so really what's going on is he's just going four meters per second all the way through until about eh, 12 seconds right here so he actually gets right about there and that is where they officially meet okay so it says find the dis we want to find the displacements and the difference between. That's all we really want to do. So what we can do is we know that uh, for Arthur, if we break this into parts, we could find the area um, of uh, this guy. We could find the area of this guy. And then we got to find the area of this guy. So really we have this S1, this S2, and this S3. And this S1 is including like this top part right here because... It's Arthur's area, right? We're starting up here to get this stuff. So we really just need to add all those guys up and see what we come up with. Sorry, video cut out, guys. So where were we? Uh, getting the areas of all these things. So we got S1, S2, S3. So S1 is just, if we want the area of that, it's going to be 5 times 10. We get the 50. And then for this S2, it's a triangle. So we have a, a base, which is 2. And then times 1, and then we can divide that by 2, we get plus 1. And this guy is 2 times 4, so plus 8. So we get a total of 59 meters, because it's his displacement, right? And then, likewise, we can find Brendan's displacement, which won't be too bad, because it's literally just 4 times 12, which is 48. So the difference between those two is 11 meters, and that is how far ahead that Arthur gets of Brendan um, if they're leaving at the same uh, time. But of course, Brendan's going just a one meter per second hair slower than our man Arthur over here, okay? So not too bad. Um, sometimes, though, things can get a little, a little weird, just a little weird, okay? And it's okay if they get a little weird because um, we're going to see why they get weird. So here we have a graph. We have velocity versus time graph. We have initial velocity, and then something happens, and then we have velocity all of a sudden. So this, this velocity all of a sudden was up here just chilling, and then boom, it just went negative all of a sudden. It just switched up. So that's kind of weird. What could explain what's happening at this question mark? What just happen really 
I don't know. I'd like you guys to talk to each other, talk about what you think did happen, and maybe come up with some kind of explanation. And go. All right. Probably heard a lot of cool things. Um, there's a lot of different things that could have happened, honestly. Um, it could be a baseball being hit. Um, so if you're throwing a baseball, it's going at some positive velocity. If you're assuming the way he's throwing is the positive direction. And then somebody hits it. And uh, then it's instantaneously or instantaneously changing direction. And it has another velocity going the other way now. Uh, same thing with a tennis ball. Um, so same thing if you throw a ball off a wall, like playing wall ball or something. Um, it could be the flash, just changing direction, you know, just running one way and like, nope, uh, I forgot uh, forgot groceries, and then he just like flips a Yui. That works too. Um, basically what's going on is this is called a discontinuity, okay? That's basically the fancy term we use for it. It's just represented by these vertical dotted line between the initial velocity and the final velocity. So if you see something like this, there's probably just a quick change in direction. Um, and likewise, you can kind of see what it's going to look like with a displacement time graph as well. So if we think about it, let's use the uh, baseball example. Throwing a baseball, it's traveling some distance, and then all of a sudden it's coming back the other way, right? This is where the graph discontinuity continuity happened on our velocity time graph, okay? What we can assume, and we want to assume this, is that the velocity can instantly change. Why are we assuming that in these cases? Again, I want you to kind of briefly talk about this just for a little bit and go. All right. Well, we can assume that it instantly changes. And again, we have to assume it because it's not instantaneously changed. It seems like it, but it's really not. Um, for example, if a baseball bat is hitting a baseball, there is a slight there is a slight moment of time where it is accelerating right you are putting again for those of you who have taken physics before you are putting a force on that ball which means there is an acceleration that is occurring even though it's happening at such a small time that acceleration is really really high really high so we actually can just assume that it's an instantaneous change for the purposes of these graphs or else they get a little bit more complicated, okay? So that's why we can assume that. And we're going to. Um, here is our last example. We're dealing with a discontinuity, and let's see what we can deal with. That's uh, worked example 1.12 on page 29. A ball travels constant speed 10 meters per second for two seconds until it hits a wall. It bounces off the wall at 5 meters per second and maintains speed until it reaches the starting point. When it passes that point, it decelerates at 1 meters per second squared. Find the times and displacement when each, each change in the motion occurs. Um, and by that, we're probably going to want to find the total as well, because for this next part, we need to sketch the BT and ST graphs. We have to measure displacement as distances from starting point and original direction of motion as positive. Okay, so basically what that means is uh, the displacement is just from that starting point. That's all that's going on, and we're just assuming the initial, uh, wherever the ball's going, I don't even know if we're throwing it, wherever the ball's going, that's the positive direction. Okay, let's work with that. So, let's break that stuff down before we just, uh, before I'm just like, here you go, write all this stuff. Uh, part A, we want to find the distance to the wall, right? So we know it's starting off, uh, we can find the distance equals or velocity times time, so it was 10 meters per second and took two seconds for it to hit, uh, hit the wall, so it was 20 meters to get there. And now we'd like to find the time for that. So to find the time, uh, we know that the velocity is going to be 5 meters per second after um, it bounces off the wall. And so we want to find how long it gets back to the starting position. So if it takes 5 meters per second, and we know the wall is 20, <clears throat> excuse me, 20 meters away, then we're going to get 4 seconds after hitting the wall. Okay, so we started out 2 seconds at going towards the wall, and it's taken 4 seconds for it to come back. So it's going to end up just being 6 seconds total at that point. 
We also know once it gets back to the starting position, it's going to decelerate at one meter per second. So it will end up being negative because it's decelerating. Um, but we are just going to call it A equals 1 for right now because we just want the general velocity, the gist of it. Um, and we could use this velocity equals AT equation to solve for the time it takes until it gets back to rest. Again, we know that the velocity was 5 meters per second when it bounced off the wall, decelerating one, at 1 meter per second squared. It's going to take 5 seconds for it to slow down. So it's going to take a total of 11 seconds from the moment we throw the ball, I guess we're throwing the ball, to the point where it starts to stop coming back off the wall. And so to find the distance covered, we can use this Suva equation. We know what the initial velocity was. It was uh, 5 meters per second. We know the time. The time is going to be uh, 5 seconds. And we know it's 1 half negative 1 times 5 squared. Um, because we're really just looking at the time it's taking for it to um, decelerate or the time it, it took for it to get through the starting point. Because if we're looking for that, we got to think too. If I'm throwing the ball and it comes back to the starting point, it's at zero meters. Okay, So I really only care about after it passes that point and starts to decelerate. So that's why we're only really concerned with using... Um, this velocity of five meters per second and that acceleration we're looking at when it starts to decelerate and so we end up getting a total distance of negative 12.5 meters uh, which is what we're really looking for okay and that's the total distance it took for it um, after it passes through so now let's actually sketch some of these bad boys right here. I is going to start at 10 meters per second going towards the wall, right? We're going to treat that as positive. And it only goes there, it only went there for that two seconds right there. So we're at two right here, and it's going to go constant just like that. But then at two seconds, it hits the wall and it starts going the other way. And all of a sudden, its velocity changes to negative five meters per second. So all of a sudden we have this discontinuity that goes on. And now we're traveling negative 5 meters per second. So let me make sure that is a 2, make sure that's clear. And that only happened for about 4 seconds after hitting the wall. It took 4 seconds for it coming off the wall, so 2 seconds. And then 4 seconds coming off the wall to get back to the starting position. So that'll be at 6 seconds right there that it's going that speed. And then it begins to decelerate. It begins to decelerate for an additional five seconds, we found out. It took about five seconds for it to decelerate until it came back to rest, where V is equal to zero. So this slope is just going to be going up like this. And since it's decelerating, we're not making our slope go down it's decelerating so it's like we're already negative velocity and now it's a negative deceleration so it's actually positive it's kind of weird uh, we're going the other way and this is how we get a v equals zero so we got to kind of reason our way through that when using velocity time graphs they are not the same as displacement time graphs as you're about to see um, the displacement time is a little little different okay all right so we we also know that um, if the velocity, it was going 10 meters per second, it took two seconds um, to get to the wall. The wall itself, we found to be 20 meters away. All right. So at two seconds, that's going at a constant velocity. We're going to go up like this, just like a constant slope, nothing crazy. Now, when it hits that wall all of a sudden, then there is a change in its direction all of a sudden, just like we saw with our velocity. And it's going to start to slowly decelerate as we go. So this guy is actually going to end up coming down here. It's going to start to slowly curve down until coming to rest. And to represent that discontinuity, we could put that little dotted line at the two seconds uh, right there. Um, and then we can also call this negative 12.5 meters. Oops, I don't know what I just, I created a new letter, ladies and gentlemen, pretty cool. And so, 
we got this displacement time graph. So good luck on your homework. Let me know if you need help. And uh, this is Mr. Knight signing off.